The Brooklyn Bridge has survived fire, storms, and over a century of relentless use, all because of 14,000 miles of steel cables forged to withstand unimaginable strain. But manufacturing a single cable over 10,000 feet long is an industrial tightrope act where one flaw could mean disaster for millions relying on these gigantic steel veins. Each step, from mining raw ore to engineering molten metal at nearly 3,000 degrees, is a battle against invisible weaknesses. In this episode of How Giant Steel Cables Are Made in Massive Production Line, we're exposing the hidden stakes and precision obsession that make these cables the backbone of modern civilization. What really holds our cities and our safety together? Steel cable began as a solution to a deadly problem deep underground. In the 1830s, German mining engineer Wilhelm Albert faced a world where hemp ropes snapped without warning, sending workers and equipment plummeting into darkness. Albert's invention, a rope woven from strands of steel wire, transformed mining safety overnight. No longer limited by the weakness of plant fibers, mines could plunge deeper and loads grew heavier. This simple twist of metal did more than protect miners. It set off a chain reaction across industry. As cities reached for the sky and bridges stretched across rivers, the demand for stronger, longer cables exploded. Today, the world consumes over 10 million tons of steel cable every year. These unseen veins run through skyscrapers, cranes, ships, and power lines, quietly holding up the modern world. The story of steel cable is not just about engineering. It's about the relentless appetite for strength that shapes everything we build. High-powered drills punch deep into iron-rich earth, carving a grid of holes across open pit mines. Explosives drop in, detonating with thunder that fractures ancient rock into jagged blocks. Massive excavators sweep in, their buckets lifting boulders the size of small cars and dumping them into trucks that weigh more than a locomotive. These haulers crawl up winding ramps, each load destined for the first stage of transformation. At the crusher, the ore is pulverized into fragments, then swept along vibrating screens where magnetic rollers pull out unwanted stone and sand. Only the richest iron makes the cut. Conveyors stretch for hundreds of meters, feeding a non-stop flow onto trains and bulk freighters. Every ton of finished cable demands about one and a half tons of this raw material, an endless stream that links remote mines to the world's steel mills. In this supply chain, the clock never stops and the appetite for iron is bottomless. Inside the steelworks, an electric arc furnace rises four stories high, its graphite electrodes channeling a current so powerful it mimics lightning. Scrap steel and iron ore, fed in by the ton, liquefy at temperatures nearing 2,900 degrees Fahrenheit. At the heart of this controlled inferno, the plant manager oversees a process where chemistry dictates destiny. Manganese enters for strength, chromium and nickel for corrosion resistance, silicon for ductility, each element measured with surgical accuracy. As the molten metal swirls, slag forms on top, trapping unwanted impurities and leaving the steel below cleaner, tougher, and ready for purpose. Sensors probe the bath in real time, confirming composition before the fiery mass is tapped. The liquid steel flows into continuous casting molds, solidifying into billets, glowing, uniform, and engineered for the next phase. Every billet carries a precise recipe, forged under watchful eyes, destined to become the backbone of cables that hold up cities and span continents. Red-hot billets, fresh from the casting line, enter the rolling mill where the real transformation begins. Massive steel rollers, each as tall as a person, press and stretch the billets into long rods with each thunderous pass. At every stage, mill operators watch for subtle changes, temperature, speed, even the sound of metal under pressure. The rolling sequence isn't just about shaping, it's about realigning the steel's internal grain, weaving microscopic strength into every inch. As the rods cool, 
They travel through cold rolling stands that squeeze them to precise dimensions, smoothing the surface and locking in the properties needed for the next phase. Laser gauges scan each rod in real time, measuring diameter to within a hundredth of a millimeter and sending instant feedback to the control room. If a rod drifts out of spec, the system triggers corrections before flaws can travel further down the line. Only rods with perfect geometry advance, ready to become the threads of tomorrow's cable. Wire drawing begins with a rod that's still rough from the rolling mill. After acid cleaning removes every trace of scale, the rod threads into the first of a dozen tungsten carbide dies, each hole just slightly smaller than the last. Drawing machines pull the steel through these dies at high speed, stretching the metal cold step by step until it becomes a slender wire with a mirror smooth finish. At every stage, a control engineer monitors digital readouts. Laser sensors scan the wire as it passes, measuring diameter to within a thousandth of a millimeter. If the wire drifts even a hair outside the certified plus or minus 0.01 millimeter tolerance, the system sounds an alarm and automatically adjusts tension and speed. Once the final size is reached, the wire enters a heat treatment furnace, where it's heated to between 1,500 and 1,700 degrees Fahrenheit. Inside, the crystal structure transforms, balancing strength with flexibility. A rapid quench locks these properties in place, preparing the wire for the next challenge, protection against corrosion. Freshly heat-treated wire is far from ready to brave decades of weather and stress. First, every strand passes through an acid bath, known as pickling, that strips away invisible residues and microscopic rust, leaving bare steel primed for defense. In the coating hall, a technician oversees the next vital step. Wires plunge into molten zinc at over 800 degrees Fahrenheit, where a silvery layer forms atom by atom, sealing the steel from oxygen and salt. For cables destined for harsher environments, a polymer coating follows, extruded over the galvanized wire in a seamless, flexible sheath. Ultrasonic gauges scan each strand in real time, confirming the coating thickness meets exacting standards. Only wires with a flawless barrier are approved for the next stage. With this armor, a cable can withstand up to 50 years of rain, pollution, and even seawater before major maintenance is needed. Now fully protected, bundles of wire await assembly into the massive cables that support cities and span continents. At the heart of the assembly hall, the planetary stranding machine rotates with hypnotic precision. Rows of wire spools mount onto frames that orbit a central axis, each wire feeding forward under the watchful gaze of digital tension sensors. As the frames spin, the wires twist together in perfect synchrony, forming the cable's core. The plant manager sits before a bank of monitors, watching real-time feedback as the inner layer locks in stability. The middle layer takes on the main load, and the outer layer is set for abrasion resistance. Lubrication jets spray synthetic oil between layers, reducing friction and sealing out moisture. The machine's closed loop control system prevents bird caging or slack. Every strand is pulled tight, every twist measured. In this choreography, hundreds of wires become a single seamless cable, ready to carry unimaginable weight. Inside the test lab, a materials scientist stands before a wall of data, holding a section of freshly coiled cable. The proof comes by destruction. Tensile rigs grip the cable and pull with relentless force, stretching it until the wires finally snap. On-screen numbers climb past 400 tons, with some samples reaching tensile strengths of up to 2,000 megapascals. Another rig cycles the cable through a million bends, simulating decades of wind, vibration, and shifting loads. Failures are dissected under microscopes, searching for flaws invisible to the naked eye. Every coil, some stretching 10,000 or even 15,000 feet, is tracked by a laser-etched code burned into the core. This code links back to every stage of production, steel batch, heat treatment, coating run, 
making each cable's history transparent and accountable. Only the cables that survive this gauntlet earn approval for shipment, ready to shoulder the weight of bridges, towers, and entire city blocks. Every year, over 10 million tons of steel cable are produced worldwide, each one a direct descendant of Wilhelm Albert's 1830s invention. Today's massive cables, sometimes stretching over 10,000 feet in a single coil, are made possible by relentless innovation, from precision mining and alloying to laser monitor drawing and 50-year corrosion-resistant coatings. The process is documented in international standards, yet some details, like proprietary alloy mixes and real-time plant sensor data, remain closely guarded by manufacturers. What is clear? Every cable must pass destructive tests of up to 2,000 megapascals and 400-ton loads before a unique laser code is etched for traceability. Without these cables, modern bridges, skyscrapers, and offshore platforms would not stand. The journey from iron ore to finished cable reveals a supply chain and quality regime as robust as the products themselves. These steel cables are not just components. They are the engineered backbone supporting the world we build.